Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. This is going to be episode two of my crafting podcast. I realize it's been a little bit since I did my um, first episode. Um, you guys were so nice. Everybody was so kind in their comments and a lot of people wanted me to continue on. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, it has been a little bit. I think I did my last one right before Christmas. Um, if you don't know, then the holidays get a little bit crazy. But right after that, we went on our very first Caribbean cruise, actually very first cruise ever. Um, I tend to get seasick, so it was a little bit of a challenge for me, um, but overall we had a great time. I do have two vlogs on that cruise, so if you want to see everything that happened, um, I'll try and remember to link them below, but if you go to my channel, you'll see them there. It's the only cruise we've ever been on, so if you search for cruise, you will find them. Um, we went from out from Florida, we went to Cozumel and Grand Cayman Islands. The um, ports were absolutely beautiful. We did have a medical emergency on board of our ship. Um, the very first sea day and so we had to turn around head back to Key West and the um, US Coast Guard came and airlifted a passenger off of our ship so it was really um, kind of crazy and exciting um, we did hear later that he was totally fine so that was good um, but from that point forward we turned around and then we were like full steam ahead to all of our ports our ports also got shortened so we only had about five hours at each port which was kind of a bummer um, I definitely would have preferred to be able to spend a little bit more time there and also because we were going um, quite a bit faster than normal. Um, we also encountered rough seas. We encountered um, really high winds. I think we had 80 kilometer an hour winds, which I think is roughly 50 mile an hour winds. Um, and so the seas were really super um, rocky. I did end up getting seasick, which was such a bummer. Um, only one night I got seasick from Cozumel to Grand Cayman overnight, which was kind of rough. And then we were able to get off the ship in Grand Cayman, which was nice. Um, and then the very last sea day on the way home was really rocky as well so I was sick for the majority of that day um, so it was kind of a crazy experience I think overall everyone had a great time it was a lot of fun the ports were absolutely beautiful we did some snorkeling um, some sightseeing some shopping but if you want any more information on our cruise, you can definitely head over and watch the vlogs because it's a lot more interesting to see all of the imagery than just listen to me talk about it. So I will move on. Um, if you're new, this podcast is about pretty much cr any kind of crafts that I do. I didn't want to limit myself to like, you know, one thing. So I talk about cross stitch, knitting, um, um, some crochet. I haven't done any crochet on here yet, but I do crochet. Um, definitely sewing and quilting and um, spinning so far. So if I add anything else to the repertoire, you'll be first to know. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to kick this one off with my finished knitting projects. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen a lot of these projects already, but I didn't show them on my podcast, so I'm going to show them here for you guys. Um, I have been doing a lot of beginning knitting tutorials for everyone, and we had a lot of requests for that, and so um, I did a bunch of those, and then I went ahead and started putting up some really beginner-friendly, super easy projects. So I'm going to kind of show you those today. So here is one of the projects. This was the first one I released. This is just a super simple um, knit scarf. For this project, I used the butter cream. I think I just got this at my local Joann's or Michael's, I can't quite remember. 80% um, acrylic, 20% alpaca. Um, and I don't normally love working with acrylic yarns unless they're for sure mixed with something else because I just don't like the way they feel on my skin. But this is actually pretty nice and squishy. This is a super bulky project, as you can see, which makes it really great for beginners. And you can make this as long or short as you want. You could even seam the ends together and turn it into an infinity scarf. Um, so this was just a really fun, easy project. This is a free tutorial on my website, and this is 100% beginner friendly. If you've never knit before, I cover pretty much all the basics in this tutorial. So that was one of my first finishes. Here is my next one. This one is also super beginner friendly and easy and as you can see a nice super squishy hat pattern. Again for this one I used this Loops and Threads Lush Alpaca and this is a blend as well. 80% acrylic and 20% alpaca for this one. So this one um, is actually, in my opinion, a little bit softer and squishier. It feels less acrylic than the, um, the blue scarf I just showed you. 
but I think that they are both great um, beginner yarns. They're nice and chunky. They feel nice to the touch. And I definitely think a little bit chunkier yarn are easier for um, a beginner. Anyways, this is a super, super cute project and perfect for this time of year. And then on top here, I have this beautiful palm. This is from Life's Little Things. She has an Instagram account. I will try and make sure I link um, her below. She has the most beautiful palms though. I mean, as you can see. And this one was just a tie-on palm. So I actually just threaded it through the bottom of my hat here and then as you can see I just put a button on there to help give it a little stability and I just tied it around that button that way if I ever want to I can pull it off I can wash my hat or I can even change out the palm if I feel the need for a different color um, but I think just throwing a little button in there just really helps give your palm a little more stability and it stays um, on a lot better so let's try this bad boy on All right, there you go. As you can see, this guy is super nice and soft and squishy and with the band coming up over your ears here, makes it really nice and warm and perfect for the winter months. This is probably as simple as it was to make. And by the way, this is super beginner friendly. If you need to know how to knit, purl, um, cast on, I show you all of those things in the tutorial. So if you've never knit before, I really think you could probably tackle this project. Um, and even if it's really something simple and easy like this, I wanna say this is one of my favorite hats that I've ever made just because it is so soft and squishy and cozy. Um, the color is perfect. It pretty much goes with any of my outfits and so, Loving this one. I will try and link both the scarf and this hat tutorial for you guys below as well. All right, my next finished project, and like I said, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you will have seen this, but this is my Knit Miss Cow. This is a new pattern that I wrote up so that just for Christmas this year. You guys all wanted to see the pattern, and so here it is all finished up. Here it is kind of spread out so you can see it a little bit better. This is kind of one of those projects that you can make as long or short as you like. Um, I think that this would actually be a really good length as well. It does look kind of long on here, but when you put it on, it's actually really, really perfect and pretty and I love it. If you guys are curious, I did the yarn ink advent calendar this year and so that is what all of these yarn colors that you're seeing are from. She, in my opinion, puts together beautiful advent calendars every year and I will link her website below. I want to say they go on sale sometime in like July or August. It's definitely mid-year when she um, lists them up. I think it was that. Yeah, I don't know. Keep an eye on her website. Make sure you're following her on Instagram because she announces everything there. Um, but in my opinion, these colors were just so incredibly pretty. She did a beautiful job on them. I can't even, I, I mean, Having a dyer basically sort of blend your yarns together for you is just, in my opinion, totally worth it um, because I think she did a beautiful job and I really like how it turned out. So I apologize. I don't remember what the um, yarn is. I think it's um, like some kind of a merino blend or something like that. It's definitely very soft for sure next to the skin squishiness. Um, I also held mine double so that it was just a little bit extra squishy because this is fingering weight yarn. and. I just wanted my cowl. I've done one out of fingering weight yarn before um, and it was lovely and beautiful, but it was definitely a little bit thinner and kind of um, drapier. I wanted something that was a little bit chunkier and warmer for the winter months. And so I think that this really, just holding it double like that really gave me that kind of squishy vibe I was going for. And as you can see, I'll try and drag these up so you can see all of the colors in here. Um, I did not use all of my skeins. I decided that it was long enough as it was. Um, and so I think I just skipped like maybe one or two. I can't remember how many repeats I did. Um, but you can, like I said, this is a repeatable pattern so you can make it kind of as long or short as you would like. Um, and I think I might even, um, I have a lot of yarn left over so I think I might do a hat out of it, like a matching hat. Um, and so if I do that, I will let you know. But this pattern is now available. It is on my Ravelry. I will link it below. It's also in my website store as well if you guys prefer to buy things there um, in PDF format. And yeah, it's perfect for all those little mini skeins that you might have left over. It definitely can make this out of like just scraps that you have left over and just have maybe the color repeats be a little bit more frequent. Um, it's perfect for using up all of your stash. But I did the Yarn Ink 2019 advent calendar for this one and I am so glad I did because 
the colors are just absolutely beautiful definitely was a labor of love but I'm really glad I stuck with it because I am so happy with the finished product and I know that you guys are loving it thank you so much you guys have been really kind on your comments on Instagram and I know a lot of you have already gotten a hold of this pattern and um, have started it yourself so if you make it please make sure to tag me on social media I'll put the tag right here on the bottom of the screen um, that way I can um, be following along and see what you guys are making with this pattern but anyways this one was super fun definitely my kind of advent fun all right, I think that's it for my finished objects for um, right now. I do have a few works in progress. This first one is in one of my drawstring squishy bags. This is a free tutorial on my channel, um, so you can definitely check that out. These project bags are perfect for all your little knitting projects. This one is actually holding a shawl, which, um, you know, there's quite a bit of yarn in here, and the project isn't super tiny, so, I mean, you can really kind of fit a lot of things in here. I will pull it out for you. First, I'm going to show you the yarns that I'm using for this. These are all from Barnyard Knits. Okay, so here are the yarns that I'm using. These are all from Barnyard Knits, and I'm gonna be working on the Goldfinch Shawl, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, these colors are, this one I believe is called Beach House. This really fun kind of speckly cream color. And the next one here is Wheat Field. It's just the perfect kind of speckly wheat color and then this last one is called nightfall and it's just this beautiful kind of tonal blue color and I love the combination of these three colors together um, the gold and the blue kind of pick up the speckles again those are all from barnyard knits and um, I'll do my best to link everything in the description box below the video so just make sure to click that show more link and you um, can see it there so this one is the goldfinch pattern this is by Andrea Mowry and as you can see, it's got some really fun stripey things happening in there. And this is a project that I've actually been working on for kind of a while because it's one of those ones that I sort of sit down, work on it, I get really into it, and then I kind of put it away and then I pick it back up later. And so this has been going on for, I think I started it this summer. I can't remember for sure. Um, I have it on my Chow Gu interchangeable needles, and these are probably... Uh, my favorite all-time needles mainly because the, um, I love the needles but the cord itself is just so nice and pliable and I don't feel like I'm fighting with the cord ever so I will try and kind of stretch it out it is squished on my needles a little bit here but I actually am quite a ways so it kind of starts out with this little tail here and then you just work your way down it gets a little bit wider as you go and then there is some kind of lace happening in here and then you do some stripies and some more lace the lace by the way is super easy um, and I think she might even have she does have some tutorials on her website for some of the kind of trickier things of her patterns so and I can't remember if this was one of them or not but really it's just yarn overs it's nothing super difficult so if you can knit pearl and yarn over I would say you could probably tackle this project so as you can see, I can't quite fit it all on the screen here for you, but this will be really good sized. I think color-wise, it's gonna be perfect. Um, this would be great with jeans, t-shirt, or a long sleeve shirt, something like that. Um, and it's not very heavy because this is fingering weight yarn, so it's really quite um, drapey and drafty, and I think this would actually be a great shawl for um, you know spring or even um, fall you might even be able to get away with it on a cool summer night um, just because it is so kind of airy and you know you can really kind of probably see me through that it's not very thick at all but I am loving how these colors are coming together for this project um, I also am kind of weaving in my ends as I go so it's not like overwhelming when you're done um, but I'm really excited about this I really should probably just sit down and work on it because um, I'm getting pretty close to the end and I know I'll just be, you know, I only have a few more color rows left and then I'll be done. So probably should just sit down and finish it. But anyways, it's always a nice little project to kind of have. Um, it's really easy to pick up, figure out where I am. I just use some highlighter tape to highlight my row and then it's pretty easy for me to just grab this again and keep going. So. My next project I'm working on is a hat, and this isn't really a pattern I've put out yet. Um, this is a super, it's almost like, you know how they have vanilla socks, this is kind of a vanilla hat pattern. Um, but I really wanted to use up this yarn. This is from Lolo Did It, um, and this is Dowager Countess, and I'm not sure if she still has it um, in her shop anymore because honestly, I've had this yarn for a while. 
Here is her tag, Lolo did it. You can find her on Instagram and online pretty much everywhere. And this one is Dowager Countess. This is 80% superwash and 10% cashmere and 10% nylon. So it is super soft and squishy. And I just decided to cast on just a plain old knit hat. I may do some texture, but honestly, I might not. One thing that I did do was I um, did this double brim right here. And so all I did, if I can show you underneath here, you can kind of see where those rows were combined. So I just knit a really long brim, folded in half, and then um, knit the rows together. And so it's actually attached. So instead of folding this one up where you can kind of move the brim around, this brim obviously will be a double thickness, but you won't be able to move it around. It's already kind of sewn on there. Um, and that row was a little bit challenging, not much. I mean, you just had to kind of find your very first stitch and you just knit two together all the way around um, to combine those two layers. And um, if you're new, that might sound kind of confusing. Um, if you want, I can try and do a little tutorial for you guys on it uh, but it's really super easy and then it kind of gives you this look you can see where those two layers were stitched together kind of so it's definitely squishier right here and then we go into a single layer right here and so far I'm just knitting kind of just like a squishy all knit beanie um, I may throw some texture in there but for right now that wasn't my plan I just wanted something simple and then I'll put a fun palm on top if I can find like a purple um, or maybe a blue so here are some palms that I have in my stash and I think that really probably any one of those would go really cute with it. I think the navy blue, maybe the purple, I don't know. It's going to be a hard choice. So I have these kind of in the wings waiting and then when I get done I'll throw a couple on there and see which one goes the best. These are from all over. This one I can for sure tell you is a McPorter Farms palm. Um, I've had in my stash for a while. Uh, so is this one I believe. And these are all the snap-on ones and so you just sew the snap onto the top and then you can just interchange out your pom-poms to match your outfit. So that's fun. This blue one I actually picked up at, I think, Joann's. This is a buttercream brand, same as the scarf yarn that I had before. And it's actually pretty fluffy and puffy. Um, not quite as pretty as the um, kind of hand dyed ones with, I mean, these ones have like colored tips on them and stuff. Um, but it still is actually pretty good size. And um, so, you know, so yeah, it does have the... Um, elastic tie on it which is not my favorite uh, mainly because they're just a little bit harder in my opinion to attach to the tops of your hats but whatever uh, they're definitely less expensive than kind of the more hand dyed so that is another current whip I have and again these are um, also on my chow goo interchangeable needle sets um, and just my favorite all right my next project is a bit of an experiment and here is the yarn I think this is Barocco Modern Cotton. This was in the bag with it, so I can't 100% remember, um, but it is have a it does have a cottony feel, so I think that's the right one. As you can see, I have two balls of yarn here. So I am actually holding a three strands together for this hat, so that makes it a little bit um, challenging. But what is happening is this lovely, squishy fabric. I am just doing a simple cable hat with it and I am just doing a cable every like six rows I believe it is I think I wrote it down somewhere but it is super soft and squishy and as you can see this yarn isn't very thick on its own um, and so but when you put three strands together it really gives you kind of a nice squishy hat. So it is a number four yarn weight, and so then with three of them together, I think that kind of turns it into super bulky. Um, this is being held on my Chowgu interchangeables, and I'm using pretty thick um, size needles, as you can see here. These are a 10 and a half, and then I just have my little 16 inch cable on there. And then here is my cable needle, and I just kind of stick it in as I go. Um, I recently got a different one that looks like a loop, and I think I like that one a little bit better, um, but one thing about these plastic ones I like is that um, they're a little bit tackier I guess and so when you pull your strands off for um, your cable this doesn't fall out of them and the one that I have that's metal is pretty slippery um, which makes it nice when you're knitting those cable stitches back off but it also um, can slide off if I'm not being careful so I have a couple different types this is the one I'm using for this project and then as you can see I've got a nice long brim here so this will get folded up like so, and then we'll have a nice squishy brim on it. 
Um, and then I think I'm probably going to do a white palm on here. I haven't 100% decided. Um, we'll see. Might even look good with this color palm. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> So yeah, we'll see. I have a whole um, like kind of basket of pom-poms over there. So whenever I do a hat, I just kind of go and dig in there and get one out. So poms are my weakness. I love buying them and they're just soft and fluffy and I think they kind of make any hat. Um, and let me know if you guys feel like you want this pattern um, and then I will write it up for you. I would say just because you're holding three strands together, it's a little bit trickier. Um, you could definitely get like a more bulky um, yarn probably and it would be a little bit easier if you're new. Um, if you're not, I I'm really kind of digging the texture that those three strands together are giving this hat. I think it just makes it like, I don't know, just gives it a little bit extra that I don't know that you could get with a single strand of bulky, but that's just my opinion. I am really happy with how it's knitting up though. And I really probably only have a few more repeats before I um, bind it off and it's ready to wear. And then I did want to mention this little guy. This is um, row counter ring and it fits perfectly right here on my ring finger. And then I can just twist it to count my rows. I always use a row counter whenever I am doing um, cabling because uh, you think you're going to be able to remember and I just never can quite remember which row I'm on. And it's also a little bit more difficult to count um, from the cabled row up how many rows you've done. And so I just find it a lot easier to make sure that I am keeping track of my rows with some kind of row counter. I like this ring. I just toss it in my bag and then I can just put it back on. I already know what row I'm on and I can just keep on going. So that's really nice. I also have an app I want to show you guys. So it is this one right here and it's called My Row Counter. So it's the little red one with the kind of numbers on the top. And then when you turn it on, it's got your different projects on there. So as you can see, I have three projects in here right now. And then you can just click on a project and it will count your rows for you. You can also put notes and other kinds of things in there. Right now I'm just using it to keep track of what row I'm on, but I do find it really helpful. Um, you can have also, it has knit and crochet projects in there. You can add, um, let's see, you can have you know, there's like little completed projects on here and little awards for when you finish projects and stuff like that. Anyways, this is actually really nice and easy and every time you hit a row, you can just tap this little button, um, the plus or minus button and adds or subtracts a row. So it's super easy to keep track of what you're on. So that is on my phone, which is kind of nice. Um, I have been at knit night though before with a low battery and that's kind of a bummer. So that's why I also like to have something like this on hand. So just a little tip from the trenches there. Okay, so my next project is kind of a fun one. These are the Vanilla Latte Socks by Virginia Rose Jeans. I think that's how you say that. Anyways, they're super simple. I wanted something simple, but not um, super complicated either. I just wanted something that was kind of mindless that I could take with me to the movies, or I might initially planned on taking it on our cruise, which I ended up not doing. Um, but anyways, I just wanted something kind of simple and fun and easy. So that is what these are. I'm not typically a sock knitter, or I shouldn't say that. I'll usually do like one sock, but I'm not typically a second sock knitter. And so whatever socks I have are kind of like a mismatched, you know, sock situation. So this one though, I was really excited to start on. This is the Jingle Balls. I showed it in my last um, podcast. This is from Grocery Girls. It was their Christmas Jingle Balls 2019 um, set, sock set. And it comes with two other coordinating colors. So here are the two that kind of come with it. Um, they match it perfectly and it's just a really fun kind of minty color. I do believe this is a merino. Um, I can't remember what it said on the um, thing, but you could always probably find it on their website. So I have started my first sock project in a very long time. Um, and so, and then I just did a two by two ribbing for the cast on. So I'm just going to use this accent color for the cuff. And then I think I will probably use that purple color for the toes um, and heels, but I haven't decided yet. One thing that is holding me back on this, this is slow progress for me. Um, and I think it's just, I'm not a I can't decide if I'm a fan of the DPNs or not. Um, I think probably what I'm going to do, as you can see, I had um, these needles in the top of it right here. These, I did go ahead and purchase um, a longer, I think this is a 32 inch cable, um, and this is my chow goos, my <laughs> standard chow goos. Um, and I think I'm gonna change and start knitting it um, magic loop because I think I will prefer that a little bit more. Um, I don't know, I just find the DPNs a little bit finicky and I'm used to working with chunkier yarn and bigger needles and so these kind of tiny ones are just like, 
I don't know, I'm, they're giving me my hands cramps or something. I'm not sure. Anyways, it's kind of detracting me from wanting to work on this project, but they're really cute, so I wanna finish them. So I think I am going to switch these out and try the magic loop method and see if um, that one works better. I don't know, leave me a message in the comments on your preferred sock knitting method. Do you like DPNs? Do you do magic loop? Um, I've seen those ones that are kind of DPNs, but they're flexible. I haven't ever tried those. Um, so yeah, I don't know. And I definitely didn't do two at a time because I knew that would just get um, kind of annoying for me. And so I'm just doing one at a time and with any luck, I'll finish this one and I will make a second one. We will see. I'll keep you posted. It's possible this gets ripped out and turned into a hat. So that is it for my knitting projects. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to spinning. So last time we were here, I think I showed you this, um, but it has since been taken off the Nitty Naughty and washed and wound up. Okay, so this one is Parisian Spring. Um, this one is a one of a kind, so you probably, I don't know that you could get it on her website anymore, but you can always check. It's 25% rose, 8% gold stellina, 50% 18.5 micron merino, and then 17% 25 micron merino merino this came out at a fingering weight and I have 350 yards here and this is just a two ply it is super squishy and soft I kind of wish you could feel it because um, I think those two different um, merinos in there and I don't know about the rose I've never um, spun that before uh, but it's really nice and soft and squishy and as you can see it's these lovely springy colors as well. Um, I'm excited to have this one done in time for spring, so hopefully I can make something pretty with it. I have no idea what I'm gonna make with it, just so you know. Um, and if I can find it, I'll put in a picture of what the fiber looked like before, um, if I can find it on my Instagram. But yeah, so this is one of the finishes. Um, I always love getting stuff off my um, wheel. One thing I wanted to show you here, um, back here on my um, table, is my spinning wheel. This is a Spinolution Echo spinning wheel, and this I think has probably been the best purchase ever, um, especially for a new beginner um, spinner, but I think it can really grow with you as well because I can spin anything from super fine fingering lace weight yarn to super chunky, clunky, fun, like bubbly um, art yarn on it. It has a hook orifice and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. I mean, it just makes it really nice and flexible. Okay, so here is the wheel up a little bit closer for you to see. It's got these two foot pedals on the bottom down here, and then you just press those back and forth to get it spinning, so it's super easy. As you can hear, um, it hardly makes any noise at all. I do have a full review on this wheel as well uh, if you want more information on it. Um, but one of the things I took off is this little orifice here and this is what they call a hook orifice. So it's just got a hook on it that the thread or the yarn runs through. A lot of them have what's called, it's like a tube. And so if you break your yarn, you have to get out the little hook, pull it back through, re kind of thread everything to keep going. This one, honestly, it just magnets on there. Super easy, so you can just, if something gets tangled up or your yarn breaks or uh, your, your fiber breaks or anything, all you have to do is just pop this off Get it out, untangle everything, put it back on, and you can keep going. So it's a lot easier, in my opinion, for a beginner. And then, of course, the bobbins look like this. So you just pull off that top, throw your bobbin on there, hook it back on, and you're ready to go. So this is really super easy. Um, I think overall, I could not be happier with this wheel. And um, yeah, I think it's perfect for beginners, but like I said, I think it can go a long way if you get into more um, you know, refined kind of spinning practice because of this hook orifice. You really don't have to change it out. If you wanna change sizes of um, yarn that you're spinning on other machines with the kind of um, tube orifice, you have to buy a different orifice. So on this one, you don't. And as you can see, it can hold a pretty good size bobbin on here with some nice chunky yarn. Um, without having to buy um, any additional parts or anything. So this is my spinning wheel. She is named Echo because she is a Spinolution Echo and I'm not very creative and I could not love her more. She just kind of has a natural vibe going on and I just really like it. So I wanted to point her out because some of you have asked me about what my wheel is. And like I said, I do have a full video review on this and how to use it um, on my channel as well. So if you're interested, you can always check that out. Now what I kind of just showed you also um, in that video is one that I just finished spinning up. This is called Romantics by Wound Up Fiber Arts. She is another one of my all-time favorite dyers, and this is a super wash merino. Here is my finished 
yarn. So this has been sitting on my bobbin for a little bit. I need to get it off and onto the Nitty Knotty so I can kind of count it. I would say just looking at this, it's probably a DK weight, um, something like that. I'm not a super, super um, consistent spinner, so it probably has a couple of finer spots and a couple of chunkier spots. But anyways, that is the color that it turned out. I really like it. This one, I was in the process of spinning last time, so um, I think if you look at my um, episode one, you can see what the actual fiber looked like. I think I was only like halfway, or maybe I had it too done and I hadn't plied it together. I don't know. Anyways, this is a two ply and I think this would be beautiful for scarf or of course um, you guys know I'm like a hat knitter so who knows might end up being a hat I never know um, and then some of them if you like my yarn some of these I do sell if I decide I'm not going to make anything with them I will sell them on my Instagram so make sure you're following me there um, but these are my two finishes and next time I'll have this one washed up and skeined up so you can kind of see what it looks like in a skein I always think they look a little bit different based on what kind of state they're in so anyways I love it spinning is such a relaxing kind of hobby I can do it while I'm watching a movie or listening to a podcast you kind of get in like a rhythm and you can kind of just go while you're maybe doing something else. So those are my finished ones. And then I do have one that I'm working on. This is another super wash merino by Wound Up Fiber Arts and this one is called Pinwheel. And if you aren't following Wound Up Fiber Arts yet, you should definitely go follow her on Instagram. She has, she always makes scrappy socks with her um, fiber and it's just, there. it's so beautiful um, and fun and kind of gets you out of your maybe color comfort zone because you realize you really kind of can mix stuff. She has these little scrappy sock bundles that she um, sells and it's just, she preps the fiber for you and it's just a variety of colors and then she shows you the kind of socks that she makes out of them afterward and it's colors you may or may not have put together but they look beautiful when they're done. So this one is Pinwheel. As you can see, it's got a lot of fun colors in there. And how I spun this one so far, I've spun half of it. So here is the fiber and here is the spun half. And I actually split this fiber in half. Um, I did have it on, I think, one of my Vlogmas episodes I was working on this. So I split it in half long ways. And then I took one half and I split it into a tiny little sections and spun those. So that is what this is right here. And then this other one, I'm probably gonna spin just straight off. I'm not going to separate this at all. And I'll spin it um, just onto a second bobbin. And then I will ply those two together and then you get kind of a fun barber pulling effect. That is what I did on this one. And it kind of keeps the colors together a little bit, but it also barber pulls them a little bit. And the barber pulling is those kind of stripies you can see in there where like right here where it's the dark pink and the light pink or the dark green and the light green. Um, so I think it just makes it kind of fun. And then when you see it knit up, it just gives it that kind of, it almost kind of has a marled effect on it um, when you're knitting. So here is where I am on this one. Again, Pinwheel by Wound Up Fiber Arts. And hopefully next time, we'll see if I get any time to work on this, but hopefully next time I'll have two bobbins ready to apply together. And I do kind of keep it in the bag while I'm working on it because um, Jax loves the fiber. And so he will get in this. He actually, I usually have to put something on top of it. Um, he will get in here and dig in here and roll around in it and whatever so anyways it gets kept in a nice little protective case here all right and that's everything I have for spinning let's move on to sewing so I haven't had a ton of time to sew um, between the holidays and then the cruise and then actually after we got back from the cruise we all got um, you know not all of us but a few of us got sick and I'm actually still getting over that cold and so I just have not had any motivation or inspiration to get into my sewing room and sit in here um, you know knitting I can kind of do in my chair while I'm watching TV or spinning so that's a little bit easier when you're not feeling great um, sewing I kind of feel like I have to have my head in the game and so I haven't done a whole lot but I am starting a brand new project that I am excited for and I think I set it on I think I showed the kit on my Instagram at one point so every month I get the sew sampler box and they come with little recipe cards and then you get one each month and then at the end of 12 months you end up getting the finishing one and you can kind of put together a scrappy quilt so this one is their barn blocks this was from last year and I was kind of waiting to see I couldn't decide if I want to do a colored version or kind of a black and white version like 
they're showing here. And so I decided to do the black and white version. Um, this will be what the finishing kind of looks like. I'm actually going to make mine bigger, so I'm probably going to put another row here and then even maybe another row on the bottom um, just so that it can fit on my bed. I have a king size bed. I'll probably also add a border to it as well. Um, and then that way um, I can make it a little bit bigger without having to make so many blocks. So I did go ahead and purchase their fabric kit. And so it comes in a kit like this. This is kind of a grungy sort of white fabric. I'm not sure what it is, uh, what brand it is. And then it has this, I think this is for the binding. I need to look a little closer and then it has kind of a variety of grays and blacks in there as well and that's so you can make all the blocks and I did manage to get one block made so I have made my first quilt block and this one so this one is block number one barn block number one and as you can see I used the um, kind of I don't know what this fabric is and I don't think it says it in here on the I was kind of looking for you guys It's kind of a mix match of vendors and whatnot. So I'm not totally sure what they all are. The white definitely has um, I'm not sure hopefully you can kind of see that but it definitely has like sort of a grungy um, Texture or pattern to it it's not just perfectly white and then they have the little polka dots and then even the black is a little bit um, kind of grunged up looking. So it's possible this is some basic gray fabric. I'm not 100% sure and then it's got these little stripies down here on the bottom. So I'm probably going to make another one of these just because I have to make extra blocks um, more than what the pattern calls for. Um, so instead of one of each, I'm going to pick a couple of my favorites, probably a couple of the easier ones. This one was really pretty easy to put together um, and I'll make a few of those so that I have some extra to make it a little bit bigger. In the meantime, this is my current sewing project. I literally just started it, which is why I only have one block done. Um, but I'm really happy with how this block turned out. I kind of took my time on it. I feel like all my points got um, really, you know, pretty straight and everything kind of came together like it should. So anyways, that is block number one. That is my current sewing project. And I do have a bunch of other fun finished projects to show you. Um, these are all tutorials that I did between the last episode and this episode. Um, and I believe they are all live now. Um, yes, they should all be live now because the next one I'm about to show you is going up tomorrow. So so the first one is these fun little notions pouches and a couple of them I did boxy corners on and then this one I actually just left flat so it's a nice little flat pouch. I've got like scissors and my um, needle gauge and stuff like that in here. Um, so it's just perfect to um, just put all of your frequently used supplies in I guess and then I just throw this in my knitting bag and then I kind of can grab this out if I want to grab a different project and put it in the other bag. So um, and then the video like I said this is a free tutorial so the video shows you how to make this one with these little tabs and the um, boxy corners on it and then I have um, made a smaller one that I thought would be good for you know like some of my embroidery things like my needles and bobbins and you know something like that so anyways you can really kind of make these any size you want um, using the tutorial just as long as the outside fabric and the inside is the same you're pretty good to go but these are super um, I think functional. They're really cute. You could use them. My girls want to use them for like their little pencil cases for school. Anyways, this is a free tutorial and um, I will try and link all the free tutorials I'm about to mention below, but this is one of my sewing finishes. This next finish right here is another Amalfi tote. This is another free tutorial on my website as well, um, but I just had to remake it because of this fabric. This fabric is, I think it's called Wanderings by Poppy Cotton, um, or it might be the metal one. She has two lines and I got kind of a, a grouping. I'll show you the fabric in just a little bit um, but it's so pretty and fun and then I also had these um, leather handles that I got I think I got these at like Joann's they have a kind of a leather section and they have handles and straps and stuff and then the inside just has this fun pink color and then another one of the poppy cotton I'll have to show you when I show you my fabric because I don't think I can show you very well in here but anyways, so that one was super cute and I did of course need another knitting bag because I've got a ton of projects happening right now. Um, that is what I use these for. They also make cute little purses and you know, totes and things like that. But anyways, so I did make another Amalfi tote. This might be um, my favorite tutorial that I've done. This bag is super, um, it's like the perfect size and it's really easy to make. I think it really kind of showcases some of your more special fabrics and they're the perfect size for pretty much any kind of crafting that you like to do, crochet, um, knitting. Um, I had stitching in one upstairs. So yeah, they're the perfect little bag. 
My next finish were these super cute double, I have fiber all over everything, <laughs> um, double zip pouches and I did a couple of them and this is also out of the poppy cotton fabric. These were, um, I, again, I think this one, I think they're called her um, Wanderings line and I then this one might be the metal line, I can't remember. But anyways, I'll try and link her website. Poppy Cotton is the designer. And I just did a cute little zipper pouch. Um, but I wanted a double zip pouch because um, I'm going to keep some of my knitting um, supplies and whatnot in here. And I just wanted this smaller pouch for some of my smaller things like stitch markers and things. And then I can put some of my larger supplies on the inside. So I thought a double zipper pouch would be really cute. And then this one, like I said, used a couple different colors of zippers, a couple different colors of fabric, which makes it really fun. And then these bunnies, I mean, they're just so cute. And then the inside of this one, I've got, this is um, actually a different fabric line. This is a Pam Kitty fabric line, and it's kind of a um, newspaper print. Let's see if I can show you a little bit better on here. Actually, I could just turn it inside out. Here's the inside of it. It's this really light um, gray kind of newspapery print and it is super cute. And this is some fabric that I've actually had in my stash for a while. It's from Pam Kitty Morning um, for Lake House Fabrics, I think is the manufacturer. Anyways, and I just did white zippers for this one, two white zippers. And this pattern is actually quite easy. Um, I think even a beginner could probably tackle this. Um, if you're a super, super newbie, you might want to just do my regular, I have like a really easy zipper pouch that's just kind of bare bones. Um, you might want to tackle that one before you do the double, but all in all, I think this was a pretty easy project. I will say in the video, and I, I did say it in the video, um, I boxed the bottoms of this bag, and I used a different technique because I've just, every now and then I like to kind of change it up and show you guys different ways to do things, um, just because you might find something you like better. Um, this was not my favorite way, I think, to do this. Um, there's a couple different ways to box your bottoms, and one of them, you cut out the corners of your fabric first before you sew it together, and then you kind of, um, sew the bottoms together and I don't like that. I think I prefer doing it the way that I do it in like 90% of my tutorials. Um, but anyways, super fun and easy project and I did make a couple of these. I'm going to use one for my knitting and I think uh, one of my daughters has already kind of commandeered the other one for some of her stuff. So, but still another fun finish and a free tutorial as well. And then my last finish and this is also a free tutorial, are these fun little cross stitch bags. I mean, they're not really cross stitch bags. You can use them for embroidery, stitching, anything that's a little bit flatter. As you can see, they're pretty flat, so um, I wouldn't necessarily wanna put a huge knitting project in here because I think even the ball of yarn would probably be a little bit too much for this. Um, this one has this cute little um, cherry zipper pull on it. And so that is from, I think it's called Rose Garden. Um, I will write it on the sc screen below. I actually have her Instagram on my phone so I can show you, but that's my first one. And this fabric is also Pam Kitty fabric, all of it. Um, and this kind of newsprint one is similar to the one I just showed you um, on the inside of the other bag, um, but it's just such cute, fun, cheery fabric. And I used a green zipper for that one. And then here's my second one. This one has my actual cross stitch um, project that I showed in my first one. This was Little um, House, oh, Country Cottage Needleworks. And this one is Snowy Reindeer. The zipper pulls are from Rose Garden Patchwork. I found her on Instagram and I will show that again here in just a second when I get into my acquisitions because those were both new purchases. But anyways, these were another finish that I had. Super cute and fun. They're just these little vinyl pouches and I think they're perfect for these kinds of projects. You can see what's in them so you can see what project it is and they also store really nice and flat and so if you have a lot of stitching type projects or whatever these are perfect I think I finished this one at let's see it looks like it's about 12 by maybe 14 so it's a really good size pouch um, following the tutorial you could literally make these any size you want you could definitely make smaller ones um, if this is too big for you you just have to kind of make sure everything's the same size but really the tutorial is could not be any easier it's super super simple so that is another finish that i had in the sewing realm and again another free tutorial for that one as well so my next finish is one that i gave you a little bit of a sneak peek on um, in my last episode and this one is my mary noel quilt pattern and i'm actually going to insert some video in here 
to kind of show you because this guy is huge and it's gonna be impossible for me to show you on here. This is kind of a mix of some of my Sweetwater fabrics, um, older lines and newer lines. Their newer line is called, I think, the Christmas card. So there's a few pieces of that in here. I also have some fabric called Holly's Tree Farm um, and just some other lines that I've just had in my stash. This one is super soft and cozy. As you can see, it is a star pattern. Um, in my opinion, stars are just kind of universal. It doesn't have to be a Christmas quilt. You could definitely make this using um, some different spring or summer fabric, and I think it would be just as cute. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw this backing, but this backing I thought was just adorable. It's got these little kind of slug bugs carrying Christmas trees, and this is a um, fleece. Um, backing and so it's super soft and squishy um, making this quilt really nice and heavy um, my son used it on his bed all during Christmas and he loved it you really don't even need like a blanket under it because it's so soft like sheets on his bed I think he just slept with the quilt um, but as you can see this guy is super soft and squishy um, and this is one of my favorite quilts I think that I've made. I think I say that every time I make a new one, um, but I am for some reason partial to stars. I love stars. I think they're just kind of a classic quilt block um, and this one's actually very easy and comes together quite quickly. As you can see, these blocks are quite large. Um, I think they finish at about like 20 inches each, somewhere in there. Um, so they are really good size stars. Um, the larger pieces mean that's a little bit easier to put together. They come together quite quickly and you can kind of chain piece them all together and make several at once. And so these have, I think there's nine star blocks on this whole quilt and it finished at quite a good size. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll try and remember to put it here on the bottom of the screen for you. But that is another one of my recent finishes and I thought you guys might like to see it since I gave you a little teaser in the last episode. One other thing I wanted to mention because you guys always ask is this quilt on the wall behind me here. This is my vintage spring quilt. I will put a link on where you can get it um, in the description box below but if you just go to uh, store.confessionswithhomeschooler.com and click on quilt patterns you will see it there. I have vintage spring, vintage summer, vintage fall, and um, vintage Christmas up there right now. Uh, super cute. They all kind of have this same truck theme and this one has cute little flowers in the background. It's snowing outside but this one is giving some nice little bright cheery spring to my sewing room. So I know you guys always ask that's what it is. All right, so I think that is it for all of my kind of finished projects, crafts, and whatnot. Now we're gonna get into some of the acquisitions, and it was Christmas last time I filmed, so I do have a Christmas present to show you, and then a couple of other fun goodies. So this is my Christmas present from Jason. This is a um, yarn swift, if you guys are unfamiliar, and it basically pulls out, let me kinda try and pull it out for you here and opens up like this. And then you put those skeins of yarn that come like this, you unwrap them, and then you put your yarn on there, and then it spins as you unwind it on to your ball winder. And so I have been wanting one of these wooden ones for a while. I had um, or have a kind of plastic version, which is fine, um, it works quite well actually. Um, aesthetically pleasing, it's like a bright green and it's plastic and metal everywhere and so it's just not quite as pretty. Um, it also gets, um, the yarn can get tangled in it. Um, however, I would still recommend it because as long as you're paying attention, um, it actually works pretty well and it's pretty inexpensive. This one was just a little bit more. Um, I can't remember how much he paid for it. I want to say, um, maybe somewhere around the 40 to $50 mark. So this wasn't a super expensive one. Um, I'll try and find the exact one I have and link it for you guys below. Um, so far, I'm pretty happy with it. I will say it gets quite a bit bigger um, than my um, metal one that I had. And so the size range is nice because if you have minis or you have larger skeins of yarn, I think that works out really well. I also like that it's just kind of a little bit more natural feeling. Um, everything on here is pretty much wood with the exception of a couple. There's some nails holding it together and whatnot, but otherwise you, it has this little thingy here that holds it up and down um, and it just screws in place so you can kind of put it where you want and then of course you can lower it um, when it's not in use and then it um, screws onto your table 
right here. And so it doesn't really damage your table. That's the other thing I like about it. I feel like my metal one has these plastic clamps on it and it really can dig into my Ikea table that I have here. It's not like a super hardy table. Honestly, I wouldn't want to put that metal one on um, like a nicer table either because the clamps um, sort of dig into the table and there's definitely a mark where I have it um, been putting it. This one is just nice flat wood. It's just held on by this screw so it just kind of clamps it on um, and so far I haven't noticed any damage occurring to my table from it. So um, yeah, I don't know. So far I'm really liking it. It does make a little bit of a squeaking noise when it spins um, which can kind of be like eh. But um, overall aesthetically and um, functionality wise I think this is really fun Jason thought I was crazy this is what I wanted for Christmas but he got it and I'm really happy um, and I've definitely used it a few times already all right my next acquisition is from Western Sky Knits um, and this one I actually got at um, Colorful Yarns knit shop and this is in the colorway Dainty and as you can see it's just got these fun kind of purple and blue speckles in there and it's on like a cream color to base but it does have a little kind of hint of look at there's some other blues of, of pink um and i think when i knit it up it's going to probably look even more pink as i get going but otherwise the colors i thought were just so cute and fun and i was really in a pink mood and I was enough in a pink mood that I got this lovely rose colored um, palm. This is from Life's Little Things. I think I showed a palm from her in my last one, but here it is. And it's just this beautiful kind of rose color. Now I did get this for the hat that I showed you earlier, but then when I saw it next to this skein, I was like, ooh, those actually kind of go together pretty well. This may actually end up on my other hat, I haven't decided yet. And then I got another one from Life's Little Things, same company, and this one, this kind of fun white with black tips, and as you can see, it gets kind of darker inside there. Her palms are probably my new favorite palm. Um, just the colors that she has are so beautiful and they're good size. Like here's my hand, here's the palm. They're like good size palms. That is where this one came from. So as you can see, this one's a little bit more of a gray. This one was kind of a, like a more um, tannish color, uh, but she's got all kinds of colors on her website and I will make sure to link her below because these guys are so much fun and love them. And then to go with this skein, possibly, I haven't decided yet, um, I have this Hue Loco Mohair Lace. This is 70% kid mohair, 30% silk. Um, and this is also from Colorful Yarns, but it is Hue Loco. And I thought these went together actually pretty well. So that would definitely bring out the pink in the Western Sky Knits. Um, I can't remember if I told you that one is called, it's Twinkle Sock and it's 7525 South, uh, Superwash Merino, Nylon, and Stellina. So there is a little bit of a shimmer in there. But anyways, I did get these to go together. I thought that would be a really fun, cute, kind of soft, squishy hat. So we'll see how those go together. Um, and I haven't honestly decided because now that I have this one at home, I really like the colors quite a bit. So I'm not sure if I want to um, tone it down with this pink or not. Um, yeah, we'll have to see. That kind of remains to be seen. But as you can see, they go together really, really well. So um, I think this will probably, if I do put these together, this will probably end up being a hat because <laughs> that's what I knit apparently is hats. I'm an instant gratification type of girl and hats are fast and um, yeah, I get bored quickly. So I don't know, but gosh, this would be such a cute um, like scarf or something too. So yeah, I haven't decided 100% what I'm gonna make out of these yet, but I think they go together really, really well, and they're just so pink and fun and colorful. Um, if you don't already follow me on my Instagram, you'll see if I get going on these, um, what it turns into. All right, another fun acquisition that I had, and this is from the Rose Garden um, patchwork shop that I just showed you. So hopefully that is coming up on the screen for you there, but I will link it below. She has all kinds of fun zippers and zipper pulls on her feed is just beautiful as well. Um, so definitely check her out, but I got these really fun zippers um, for some bags that I'm going to be working on and these are colorful zippers and so here you go, you can kind of see the um, zipper pull itself has kind of got this rainbow kind of hue to it. And then they have these fun little circular pulls on them. So I have a light blue one and I have a white one and they are kind of 
see-through-y. This like zipper part is kind of meshy. So I might actually do a bag where the zipper's kind of on the outside because I hate to kind of cover that up. But they're super cute. And then I also got some fun zipper pulls from her as well. This one is a cactus and is that not the most adorable thing that you've seen? I have not put this on a bag yet. This will be my next project that I'm working on. But that one is super cute. That is also where I got these little cherries from and the little bubblegum ball on this one. Little bubblegum machine or whatever, but. So anyways, she has a ton of different ones and so I just bought a few of the little zipper pulls um, for some of my project bags and then these cute zippers as well. So um, I'm really excited to use these. I think they're just so adorable and cute. They do come from the UK um, and I will say that I was expecting them to take longer than they did. They actually got here quite quickly. Um, I put my phone number in so I could get updates and it said when it shipped and then it actually got here really fast. Um, a lot of times when you're ordering stuff to the US from the UK, it definitely can take a little bit longer and I felt like shipping was actually really reasonable um, and quick so um, the next thing that I have is in a way of a bag in progress and so the first thing I got was this strip of natural leather and this is going to be a handle for a bag that I am making and I just got these at there's a Tandy leather shop um, kind of not super close, but I was um, down in Colorado Springs and um, I got this there. They have a ton of different leather strapping and handles and belts and I mean, you know, flat leather you can work on. Anyways, I just got this one um, and we were down there going to, if you're in Colorado Springs, go to Ruth's Stitchery. Um, it's like one of the largest fabric shops I've seen. It is amazing and they have a ton of fabric. Anyways, I have this fun little strip handle here and it is going to become a bag on my little stash of fabric that I got. And so I'll go through and show these. These are the ones that I showed on my um, zipper bags that I just made. So here's my little stash of fabric that I got. I ordered these off of Etsy and these are all from Poppy Cotton. She is the designer. And then I think I have a mix of two different lines and um, I will put them both below. One is called Wanderings and one is called Meadow. And I think, um, I, I'm not 100% sure which one is from which, but here is a nice little light kind of pink one. Um, again, all poppy cotton, but I don't know if it's Wanderings or Meadow because I just ordered kind of some random pieces that went together. I think this one, this is the little bunny one that I showed you that zipper pouch out of. I think this is the wanderings one. And then I think these flower ones are the metal line. So I have this blue one, which I just did that Amalfi tote out of. Um, this one is um, probably hard to tell on camera, but it's a little bit off white um, meadow. And then I also have this one, which is actually white background meadow. So it's probably kind of hard to tell. They're super similar, but the background on this one is a little bit like more of an off-white color and even with a pink tint to it, I believe. And then this one is for sure a white tint. And then I have this one, which is just a nice white background with these kind of tan circles on there, total low volume print. And that is what I used for the inside um, of one of those bags, uh, one of my zipper bags. So there it all is for you. Again, these are all by Poppy Cotton and this is going to become a new bag. And this will be the strap for that bag. So I think those will go together really nicely. Um, I haven't decided exactly what kind of bag I'm gonna make yet. Um, it will probably be a tutorial, so definitely stay tuned for um, this because this has been sitting on my sewing table for a while now and calling at me. I wanted to do those little zipper pouches for you guys first, um, but I am needing to make a little bit of a bigger tote bag, I think. Um, so that is hopefully what these are gonna become soon, but make sure you're following me on Instagram and then you'll be the first to see it. All right, guys, that is it for podcast episode number two. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I like doing these podcasts. I think they're a lot of fun and I love watching other podcasts. I think it's really fun to encourage and inspire um, each other and hopefully um, give you guys some new ideas and a little bit of inspiration to get going on some fun projects of your own as well. If you like this video, please make sure to thumbs up. And if you aren't already, please make sure to subscribe as well. That way I know to keep making fun videos for you. So that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Um, but let's go ahead and just dive right in. I'm going to kick this one off with my, um, knitting. What does it say? Does it say what it is? And I think that it makes it a lot, a little easy. And I might just leave this on for the video. Okay. Um, 
And here are the yarns. I believe, what are they called? It's been a while since I've been working on this. So, is that the front? Nope, I'm showing you the back. I think it is. Um, I can't remember for sure. Does it say the colorway on here? That might be helpful. I haven't got this on the nitty. Bandage. Okay. Whew. 